I want to go over some of our differentiation rules. I'm going to prove the product rule, and there's no way it's all going to fit here, but I'll do my best. Um, power rule, I showed you how to do that in a different video. Some indifference rules, constant multiple rule, product rule, and then the quotient rule. So what this is going to mean is that from now on, we do not have to go through our difference quotients and taking in limits anymore. There are just going to be rules that we can use when we have to do derivatives. Our life gets easier now. Okay, so the power rule. So if f of x equals x to the n, then df dx equals n times x to the n minus 1. So if your function is a, a monomial, a polynomial monomial, okay, then the way we take the derivative is the power comes down in front, becomes the coefficient, and then we decrease the power by 1. Okay. Some and difference rules. So if, let's say y equals f of x plus g of x, so the sum of two functions, sum or difference, it doesn't matter, then y prime dy dx, whatever notation you're going to use. So for adding and subtracting, we can just do term by term. Okay, so that's going to be right f prime of x plus g prime of x. Or if you were subtracting, that would be a minus. Okay, so for instance, think about that. If you had just a polynomial, multiple terms with um, x's raised to, to powers, we could find those derivatives by bringing the power down in front and then taking one away. Okay, um, constant multiple rule. Constant multiple, so that's when you have, right, a number multiplying. So if y equals c times f of x, then right, dy dx, I'm just going back and forth between the notations so that you know you can use whichever one. dy dx, the constant multiple just kind of tags along, right? Plays the same rule. c times, right, df dx. Product rule. Okay, so now these are the ones, right? So far, those are going to make kind of sense. Maybe not the first one, except um, right, you might remember from when we did the proof of that. Product rule and quotient rule, these are just you have to memorize them. Okay, so we're going to let y equal f times g. These are both functions of x. Then dy dx. I'm going to go, sorry, I'm going to mix my notations here. Sorry about that. Equals f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f. Okay. Now, because multiplication and addition are both commutative, you could write this in a couple of different ways. Um, this is just how I always write it. And in my brain, because, right, back in the 80s when someone told me for the first time, first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. That's how it's cemented in my brain, so that's how I remember it. If you have had calculus before and you have a different way that you write this, a different order, it's totally fine. We all end up at the same spot, okay? So another way, you, it's kind of a... What does it feel like? I almost not foils not the right thing, but right you have the derivative and the not derivative for each of the functions, and then you add those two together. Okay. Quotient rule. So for this one, if y is the quotient, so right fraction of two functions, then right y prime. So now this one is different. So it's going to make a fraction. So it's g times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And then that's divided by the denominator squared. So the function, whatever functions in the denominator, and we square it. So again, I'll take you guys right on a way back trip to the 80s. So this is what I have in my brain. 
low D high minus high D low over low squared. Okay. That's how I could sit here and rattle that guy off. So low is the denominator. So G, D high, derivative of the numerator, low D high minus high, one on the top, derivative of the bottom, D low, over low squared. Okay, so anyway, that's how I have mine memorized. You're going to come up with your own way to, to keep those things straight. Um, granted, right, the quarter that we're having, you're going to have a note card. I get it. You're going to have to do the quotient rule enough times, hopefully. Um, you won't have to look back every time. It'll get to a point where you can just um, write it down. Um, you're going to want to, to move in that direction. So let's see if we can do a quick little proof of the product rule. Actually, before we do the proof, let's go ahead and let's practice first, and then we'll come back and we'll hit the, the proof. Okay, use the differentiation rules to find the first derivative. So write dy dx. So the first one I have, and we'll do it two ways just to show you. So y equals x plus 7 times x minus 5. So I have a product. Cool. So the product rule says, so y prime equals, so first, right, here's my f, and here's my g. So f is x plus 7, g is x minus 5. So I have first, so that's x plus 7 times the derivative of g. Well, what's the derivative of x minus 5? So the derivative of x is 1. Derivative of negative 5 is 0. So that's just times 1. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second, so x minus 5, times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of x plus 7 so this is just f prime, that's also 1. Right, so this is f times g prime plus g times f prime. And then we're just going to tidy that one up. So y prime is, so, oh, they're multiplying by 1, so that's not that interesting. So x plus 7 plus x minus 5, so that looks like 2x plus 2. Okay, so that's finding the derivative using the product rule. Just really quickly, before I go away, we could also have found that, so option B, go ahead and multiply that, right, multiply those two binomials, so just back to Y equals, right, X squared plus 2X minus 12, Y prime equals, so now we can use my power rule, power rule on X squared, the 2 comes down, 2x, and then we take 1 away, 2 minus 1. Okay, so that's my first term, and I'm going to go term by term. So derivative of 2x, and again, you can use the power rule, even if it's just x, you'll probably say, oh, well, it's just coefficient after a couple, but anyway, the 1 comes down, multiplies the 2, constant multiple rule going on there, so then plus 2x to the take 1 away, 0. Derivative of constant, maybe from a different... Um, lesson you remember that's just a zero. Oh gosh okay so it doesn't look any better hold on hold on so 2x to the 2 minus 1 so that's 2x for the first term x to the 0 remember is 1 so I have plus 2. Okay next one f of x equals 5x cubed plus x to the 1 half. Okay so I've got a constant multiple rule, I've got a power rule, I've got a power rule. Here we go, df dx. So the power rule says you take the exponent that's there, it comes down in front, so that'll be 3 times 5 to the, I'm sorry, 3 times 5 times x to the, so we take 1 away from the power. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And then we'll go to our um, x to the 1 half, so the 1 half comes down, 1 half, x, and then we take 1 away. So I have 1 half minus 1, so that's negative 1 half. So then we'll just tidy that up. The fdx equals 15x squared plus, 
well, however you're going to write that, um, 1 over 2 root x is probably the most mathy way to write it. You can leave it like that too, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Okay, finally, g, I have a fraction going on here. So maybe you're looking back at the first one we did and think, gosh, do I just want to simplify that first? And probably, right, if we weren't just going to practice the quotient rule, you would. But we'll go ahead and practice our quotient rule because, right, we want to practice. So g derivative, dg dx, and I'm sorry, that's a g. That's going to be a little bit obnoxious. Here we go. So low x squared d high. So the derivative of 4x plus 1, just a 4. So there's the first part, low d high, minus high. Now, because it's a subtraction, order does matter. This is not a commutative one, so you really do have to go in the right order. Okay, so low d high minus high, which is the 4x plus 1, d low. So now the derivative of x squared, 2x, over low squared. So x squared is the denominator, right? But then we square it. Okay, so it looks really ugly, but we're going to go ahead and do some algebra. Let's tidy that one up. So dg dx, 4x squared. What do we have over here? Distribute your 2x. And you've got this minus sign. So maybe I'm going to think of this as a negative 2x going in. So I'm going to have minus 8x squared minus 2x all over powers to powers we multiply x to the fourth. So that's going to be negative 4x squared minus 2x over x to the fourth. And that sure does look like it simplifies. I just want to make sure I didn't forget anything. I'm just going to check my calculus up here. Low d high minus high d low squared, that looks good. Distribute negative 8x squared minus 2x. Good. Those two together, negative 4x squared minus 2x. Okay. Um, out go the x's. So my final answer is going to be negative 4x minus 2 over x cubed. Yes, there are other ways to write that. Okay. Um, sorry, I know I'm putting off my proof. I'm going to get there, I promise. Let's go ahead and do this last one though. So we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at the given x value for this function. And I have a picture over here, and I'm probably going to be needing that space. So for equations of lines, right, any equation of a line, you always need two things. You need a slope and a point. So I need a slope, and I need a point. Okay. So for our slope, if we have a function, and we're tangent, right, the slope is... The first derivative, in this case, the x value we're looking at is 0. And then our point, if the x value is 0, we'll use our function right, to get the y value. So I'll do that one real quick. So my point is going to be 0, um, negative 2. Now let's find the slope. So I have right? A fraction. I have a fraction of two functions. So to find that one, we would use our difference or our quotient rule. So derivative is low d high. Oh, sorry. Thank you. It was a plus. Thank you. Low is x plus 2 d high minus high d low over low squared. I'm going to tidy a little bit but not go crazy because I'm going to be evaluating it at this particular x value. So, and I don't have to get it super tidy to plug a 0 in for all my x's. Um, but this is making me kind of anxious. So I'm going to go ahead and tidy just a tad. So I have x plus 2 minus x plus 4. Oh, those guys go away. Okay, so f prime of x is 4. 4, hold on, is 6 over x plus 2 squared. So evaluate that at 0 is 6 over 4, or 3 halves. Okay. 
So let's just take a look and make sure everything's making sense. This is me looking around for a straight edge. I got one. So x equals zero. So we're right here, that y-intercept, and we're looking for the tangent line. So aside from my scaling, does it appear so we should have a positive tangent slope, right? That's good. You can see it from that side better, right? To be tangent at that point, we should have a positive slope. My y-intercept is negative. That's supposed to be negative. Oh, yeah, that was just a thing on top of it. Negative 2. So we look like we're in the ballpark. So I have a slope and a point. So then using your line-finding skills, um, y, oh, <laughs> the y value is just the y-intercept. I guess my line finding skills are writing it down. So y equals 3 halves x minus 2. Cool. Okay, let's do the proof. Here we go. So proof of the product rule. So we're going to let y equal f of x times g of x. Okay. So our going back to write the the definition of a derivative, right? It's the limit of the difference quotient. So then write dy dx equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x all over h. OK, so let's start with that. Now, I'm going to stop writing the limit part and the h part for just a couple of minutes. I'm going to grab a second sheet of paper because I know this is going to go long. OK, here we go. So I'm just going to manipulate. I'm going to do some algebra on my fraction there. Let's make sure I'm staying on here. So I have f of x plus h times g of x plus h. I'm going to add and subtract this term, f of x times g of x plus h. And you might be thinking, well, why on earth would you do that? And because I know how the proof works out, how about that? So I'm going to go ahead and subtract f of x times g of x plus h here. And then I will add in the exact same term, f of x, g of x plus h right after it. And now I'm going to go up and grab that last term I had, that minus f of x, g of x. OK? And this is all over h. I'm not going to write that because I need just a couple more. Look how long that got. I should write smaller. Here we go. I'm just going to look at my first two terms. And notice they both have this g of x plus h. I'm going to factor that one out. So now I have g of x plus h times f of x plus h minus f of x. And I'm going to look at my second two terms. I have f of x that's in both of those terms. I'm going to factor that f of x out. So it's f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. OK, I'm going to go ahead and grab all that other stuff that I left off because I was being lazy. So now, right, we're taking the limit as h goes to 0. All of these are over h. And I'm going to write 2, write 1 for each of my sides, I guess. OK, well, now, how about this? I'm going to split a part into two separate limits, the limit as h goes to 0. So in this first fraction, I'm going to kind of write the limit of a product. We can split it apart. We can, for limits, you can split products apart. Limit of g of x plus h times the limit h goes to 0. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Plus, do the same thing over here on my right side. Limit, h goes to 0, f of x. So the h is here, right? And it's kind of weird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up here and subtract, or not, so I'm going to erase this line right here so you can see that it's okay what I'm doing. So think of 
this as f of x over 1 times g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. You think, well, why would I do that? Well, I just don't want you to get an h underneath this f of x. There can only be one h, because if I put it in both places, I'd end up with an h squared when I tried to put them back together. OK, I hear you, but right, that would have been if we would have split this one apart into a g of x plus h over h minus a g of x over h. And that's not what we're doing. OK, so trust me, it's legal. Just make sure you don't right, try to go too far. So now I have limit h da, 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 um, times the limit. h goes to 0, back up, g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. We are almost ready to write our final ta-da. I'm going to raise this up so you can see the whole thing. So just looking at this left-hand side, so the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h, I can do that one just by evaluating. So there's g of x. And then that second part in the first part, the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, well, that's the definition of f prime. Right, the derivative of f with respect to x. Second part, plus the limit of f of x as h goes to 0. Well, I don't have an h, so that's just f of x. And then over here, the limit as h goes to 0, I have right the g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. Well, that's the definition of g prime of x, which is exactly, if you look up above, what we have for the product rule. Okay. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first.